Hey, this is, uh, I guess, a semester exam of sorts here for you to grade for uh, yourself using this video. Um, so, no calculator. There are a few calculator problems coming up later, but we'll just assume until it says that we should use our calculator that we should not. All right, so limit as x approaches 0 of this. So the first thing I need to do, because I don't know what kind of limit this is right off the bat, I need to plug 0 into this. And sure enough, it's a 0 over 0. That was easy. Um, now, what are the different things that I could do? I could look for highest exponent top and bottom, but no, that's what you should do if it's x approaches infinity. So it's not one of those limits. Um, so as x approaches 0, well, let's see, there's a lot of x's here, so I could factor some x's out on the top. x cubed times uh, 2x cubed plus 6. And then on the bottom, I've got uh, x cubed, 4x squared, plus 3. All right, just doing some algebra there. And then those cancel out. That actually was the 0 over 0 problem. So now I can plug 0 in and I get 6 over 3. If you're wondering, oh, could I use L'Hopital's rule? You could. You'd have to use it several times, and uh, these would eventually go away, and um, you would get the right answer. It's a little bit more work that way, but you can indeed. Number two, the function f is defined above. It's a piecewise function. It switches over 2 at 2. Uh, this is for values x less than or equal to 2, I plug in here. And if x is greater than 2, then I plug in here. Uh, for what value of k? if any, is f continuous. Well, if it's going to be continuous, the two pieces have to link up, which means when I plug 2 in here uh, and I plug 2 in here, i got to get the same thing. If you're looking at this and thinking, but there's no equal sign here, Mr. McGrath. You can't plug 2 in here. Well, this is the end here that's going to be like an open circle, and this is the end here that's going to have the closed dot. And if I want it to be continuous, then the closed dot has to land in the open circle so that it's continuous. So um, even though 2 isn't part of the, this little subdomain of the function, I have to plug 2 into both of these and make them equal to each other. So 2 plugged in here, that's 4 minus 6 is negative 2 plus 9 is 7, equals 2 plugged in here is 2k plus 1. I'm plugging 2 in for x. Uh, just double check that. 2, that's 4 minus 6, negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Uh, so that looks good. Subtract 1, so k is 3. All right, number 3. Um, it looks like I've got a function, and I'm going to find its derivative. So let's see. This notation here is kind of confusing or not ideal for calculus students. What this really means is that, right? And now I can see this is like a two-layer chain rule problem, right? I've got this what's inside, and then I've got this what's inside. So let's see if we can do that. What's the derivative of something, whatever that is, what's the derivative of fingernail to the third power? It's 3 times fingernail, not messing with that, squared. The derivative of something to the third power is 3 times that something squared times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of cosine of whatever? It's negative sine of whatever. But if that whatever is not just a regular old x, then you need to multiply by the, by the derivative of what's inside there. So it looks like I've got uh, negative 12, yada yada. So as soon as I got the negative 12 there, you can see the rest of it falls into place. We'll double chain rule. All right, got a function here, looking for a minimum, okay? So to find minimums, I need to take the derivative and do a little, if I find the zeros of it and do some sign chart analysis. So let's see, if I take the derivative of this, I get 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. I'd like to set that equal to zero. So, uh, and I also get a factor of six out. Sometimes you have to do algebra in math class. But it's usually not super hard algebra. I'm going to factor that. 
So that factors into, sorry, should have left myself a little bit more room there, x minus 2 and x plus 1. So there's my two candidates there, right, 2 and negative 1. So one of those is a minimum, so I'll make my little sign chart. And there's different, you can plug things in, check however you want. I like to uh, use my knowledge of functions and stuff and consider that this is an upward opening parabola, so that means it must be positive, negative, positive, right? But you can go ahead and plug things in if you want. Plug something in that's less than negative 1. Plug 0 in here, you get negative, and so on, just like we did in Chapter 5. Um, so let's see, if we're looking for a minimum, then I want the derivative to go from negative decreasing to positive, negative to positive, so that's a 2. Uh, let, the f let f be the function given by this. Which of the following is an equation for the line tangent to the graph? Okay, so looking for a tangent line. I can go ahead and find the point right away. The point here, if I plug 1 into the original function, that's how you find a point since forever. So plugging 1 in here, 2 minus 1 is 1 to the fifth is 1 times 2. So let's say the point 1 comma 2. Uh, and now I need the slope, so f prime of x is, uh, so this is a, this looks like combined, it's a product, but then when I do the derivative of this, this 2x minus 1 to the fifth, there's going to be a little bit of chain rule, really easy chain rule, but still there's going to be chain rule because of that right there. Okay, so here we go. Product rule, derivative of the first. The derivative of something to the fifth is 5 times that thing to the fourth times the derivative of what's inside. That's the first, all I did there, that's the first part of the product rule where I say the derivative of the first and then times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of the second, x plus 1, is just 1. OK? Um, I could go ahead and try to simplify that or clean it up. But really, all I care about is what is this equal to when x is 1, because I need the slope at 1 so I can write my uh, tangent line equation. So let's see. Um, I've got 1 to the fourth. Is one, uh, is 1 times 5 is 5, times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20, plus 1. So there's my two slopes. So let's see. I'm going to write it in point slope form, and then I'll simplify. They have these in y equals mx, b, uh, mx plus b form, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, so y minus 2 equals the slope times x minus 1. And so 21x minus 21 and then plus the 2. Looks like that's where we're going right there. <clears throat> All right. Here's a picture of a function. The function's given by this. There's a couple missing numbers there. Um, it shows a portion of the graph. Which of the following could be values of the constants a and b? OK, this is, I don't know. A little tricky, maybe? This is really a question about like chapter 2 stuff, like limits and things like that. If this thing has a horizontal asymptote at 3, that means the limit as x approaches infinity, as you go off forever, it's getting closer and closer to 3. So if you had x approaching infinity for this thing, and you're approaching 3, then that means when you're approaching infinity, you look at the highest powers. They're the same, so it's the ratio of the coefficients. So a would have to be 3. It would have to be 3 over 1 to get that horizontal asymptote. So uh, that's either this or this. And then if we think about, OK, there's also a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, which means that x minus 2 would have to show up as a factor on the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, if x minus 2 is going to show up as a factor on the bottom, well, my choices that they're giving me here are x squared plus 4. That doesn't factor x squared minus 4. That does factor into x plus 2 and x minus 2. So that's the ticket there. 
Um, that's, an, that's a great example of the kind of question the College Board likes to ask, where they're not just saying, like, hey, what's the limit as x approaches infinity? It's, like, kind of in disguise. And I think it's easy to look at a question like that and um, just be like, well, don't know how to do that one. But you have to believe that you know everything you need to know to be able to answer these questions. I promise you I will never ask you a question um, that you don't have all of the information you need to answer. It might take a little bit of thinking around the problem, but uh, you will always have the right information. And same for College Board questions. Um, what is the slope of the line tangent to? Okay, slope of the line tangent to just means we're looking for the derivative with x, plug, x equals 1 plugged in. Um, so for this thing, it looks like I'm going to have to do some quotient rule. So the quotient rule is low d high, the derivative of e to the whatever is e to the whatever, but if that's not just a plain old x, you need to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So that's low d high minus high d low is just 1 all over low, low. And then I have to plug x equals 1 into that. So that's 2 times uh, 2 times e to the negative 1 times negative 1. So that's 2, negative 2 e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative 1 all over 2 squared is 4. So that's negative 3 e to the negative 1, right, just doing algebra here. And um, that e to the negative 1, that's the same as e being down. That's a negative exponent, just flips things over. So that's the same as this, which is the same as that. If you're thinking to yourself, geez, this chain rule is everywhere. Yep, it is, and that is not going to change. Um, okay, so limit as h approaches 0. Two ways to do this. You can either say, okay, I'm just going to treat h like that's the variable, right? And I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule on this. Or you could say, hey, this looks like the definition of the derivative, that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Let's do it this way first. So um, what's the function here? It looks like my function is e to the x, and like looks like we're plugging 2 in. The x value is 2, and the function is uh, e to the x. So this is the definition of the derivative, right? So what's the derivative of f uh, of f of x equals e to the x? It's f prime of x equals e to the x. e to the x is its own derivative. And then f prime of 2, because we've got a 2 plugged in here, is e squared. Now, um, what if you tried to do L'Hopital's rule? OK, what's the derivative of e to the 2 plus h? Well, the derivative of e to the whatever is e to the whatever times the derivative of what's inside. Remember, h is our variable here, not x. Um, so the derivative of that's just 1. So that's fine. And then minus, what's the derivative of e squared? Trick question. Careful. e squared is just a number. e squared is 2.71828, whatever e is uh, squared. So that's just a number, and just like the derivative of 2 is 0, so is the derivative of e squared. That is 0. Derivative of h is 1, plug in 0, and you get e squared. So either way, we get to there. Um, if f prime of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, which of the following could be the graph of the function f? Sorry about those equal signs. Hope you could see that okay. Um, on your copy. So um, that's the graph of the absolute value function. These are supposed to be the graphs of f, so this is not what we're looking for. But we could kind of use this graph, too bad I scribbled on it, um, to look at, to think about what the graph of f of x might look like. So um, let's think about this. If this is the graph of f prime, this is a graph of the slopes. So first thing we could notice here is the slopes of this function the original f function, are always positive, right? 
there, everything is above here. It has a slope of 2, then it has a slope of 1, and then it has a slope of 0, but then it immediately has uh, positive uh, slopes again. So um, it's something, whatever the original function is, and I think this is actually going to be enough, well, to eliminate two of them. If this derivative is always positive, then f is always increasing. So it can't be this, and it can't be this, because if, if this was the original function, it has negative derivatives here, right, negative slopes, so f prime would have to be negative. And here I only have positive values and just touches zero. Um, this has a derivative everywhere. This doesn't have any breaks or whatever. So if this is continuous, then the original function has to be continuous. So that rules this out. And then here, this looks good. Right? And you can investigate even further, but I think we're definitely good here, right? So does this look like it has a slope of about 2? Sure. Does this look like uh, here it has a slope of about 1? Yep. How about here? Does it look like it has a slope of 0? Oh, yeah, and so on. So this is good. Um, for the function f, f prime is equal to this, and f of 1 is equal to 4. What's the approximation for this found by using the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1? All right, so forget about that for a second. I need to find the tangent line to this thing at x equals 1. To do that, I need a point, 1 comma whatever. Well, they gave that to me. And I need to know the slope at x equals 1. Well, they gave me the derivative. So if I plug 1 in here, that's uh, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So my slope is 3. So the equation for my tangent line is y minus 4 equals 3 times x minus 1. And now they want me to use that tangent line to approximate this. So that means plug 1.2 into this. I'm going to add the 4 over here. Oops. Dang it. Minus 1 plus 4. So that's 0 0.2. 3 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.6, plus 4 is 4.6. That's back, I think it was in section 3.8 that we started to uh, mess around with tangent lines and kind of use them to uh, make approximations like that. It's not hard to do. You just need to understand what those directions are asking you to do. Um, all right, number 11, let f be the function given by this. The graph of f is concave up. So concave up and down, this is chapter 5 stuff, that's where the second derivative is either positive for concave up or negative for concave down. So I need to find the second derivative of this, which ain't hard. So it looks like if I set that equal to 0, if I was going to make a little sign chart for the second derivative, 2 is where it changes. And this is just a line with positive slope. So it's going to go from negative to positive, which means it's concave up when x is greater than 2. Great. Um, number 12. If f prime of x is equal to this, then f has which of the following extrema? Extrema? What does that mean? That just means extremes or maximums and mins. Definitely need to know that word. We've seen that before. Um, a relative maximum... Okay, so hold on a second. We're looking for maximums and minimums. I'm just going to make a sign chart of this thing because they've got the derivative and it's all nicely factored for us here, so... Uh, f prime, let's see, so the zeros of this are 2, 3, and 4, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so let's see, if I plug something in that's lower than 2, like 0, I would get negative 2. This, now I want you to notice something here. No matter what I plug into this, I'm squaring things, so this is always going to be positive. So when I go through and check my signs here, basically I can ignore this piece because it's always going to give me something that's positive because of the even exponent there. 
So if I plug in 0, I get a negative times something that's always positive, um, and then another negative. So negative times a negative is a positive here. And then uh, in between 2 and 3, so like 2.5, say, all I care about is sine here. So 2.5, that's going to give me a positive here. Uh, that's less than for negative cube, so that's going to be negative there. And then something in between 3 and 4, um, that's going to be the same. Something between 3 and 4, like 3.5, that's positive, always positive. That's still not big enough to pass the 4, so this piece is negative. And then at 4, uh, something bigger than 4, so really big, that's going to be positive, positive, really big, that's going to be positive. And I want you to uh, notice something here. That Notice that this factor, which was being raised to an odd power, we got a sign change there. This factor here at 4, odd power, we got a sign change. And then here... This factor where we had an even power that was always positive, we didn't get a sign change. So that's something to um, notice. So you've got to be careful. You can't just assume that it's going to have maximums and minimums at all three of those. You have to get the actual sign change. Um, is there a relative maximum at x equals 2? Positive to negative, yep. Is there a relative minimum at x equals 3? No, it goes from decreasing to decreasing again. So, no. Is there a relative maximum at x equals 4? Uh, no, because that's actually a minimum, right? Negative to positive derivatives decreasing to increasing. That would be a minimum. So 1 only. And let me go ahead and stop this video there. We'll do the rest 13 through 23 in the uh, next video.